Welcome to Prepper Nation. I'm John. Thank you very much for watching, for listening, for shooting a thumbs up and hitting subscribe here on the platform. Uh, it helps us grow, helps us get found by other beaverines. Truly appreciated. And also Deborah Brady, ma'am, thank you very much for the mean bean this morning. I appreciate that. So uh, to respond very quickly, we're coming to you from the, the bunker this morning. Going to be a shorter video and uh, some people in chat have said, hang some, hang some pictures up, son. I really, uh, I like the look of it down here. I really don't want to do that because upstairs, my wife's got it all. I don't know how to, it looks like the Hallmark channel up there. There's pictures all over the place. It, it's just, it's a little too womany for me. It's a little too cozy for me. I like the crudeness and the, and the basic walls down here. But anyway, I digress. We're going to have ourselves one of those chats this morning. Uh, again, going to be a shorter video. We do have a live stream coming up for the folks on Patreon and the Coffee Club. Here in about an hour, check the community section for a link. We do that every Friday. We call it the after party. All right. So, you know what I find odd? I got I to gotta talk about strapping up and arming yourself here in the United States this morning because I find it very odd. As I was sitting around, you know, we got the new house speaker. Um, and as I, I predicted earlier last week, I said, if this guy becomes house speaker, he's going to continue, I think, to to fund Israel. He's going to continue to fund Ukraine. He's doing just that. Um, he is going to fund Israel, he says, at least by taking the money away from the IRS. You re remember all of those armed IRS agents they hired? Well, they're going to be out of a job if he has anything to do about it. That's where the money's coming from there. And with Ukraine, he has hand-delivered Joe Biden a list of 10 questions that he wants answered before the money is freed up for Ukraine. Um, and then also, uh, the new House Speaker has attached his own funding bill. I love this. It's the ultimate savage troll, right? He's attached his own funding bill to the Ukrainian aid. And this money would go to fix the border and try and get it under control in the event that it's not too late. But uh, so here's what I don't understand. And here's what I've been thinking about this morning. I find it very odd. Um, the White House, Joe Biden and his, you know, his administration, they are on record saying we must support Israel. We must support Israel in this war. And, uh, you know, we stand by Israel and their right to defend themselves against terror. Again, this is, this is a direct quote from the White House, right? We stand with Israel. They have a right to defend themselves. But going beyond that, Israel has already signed a, an emergency directive. So Israel wants its citizens armed, and they're saying we need to get firearms into the hands of our citizens as a failsafe, a just in case, if you will, should the war go sideways and, and uh, Hamas begin to win the war. Meanwhile, as I just said, we are still supporting Ukraine, and the White House is on record saying they so they stand with Zelensky in Ukraine. They support Ukraine's ability to defend its national sovereignty. They have their own country. We need to respect Ukraine's borders. Therefore, we're going to send crazy amounts of money in order to help them with this. Along with that, yet again, Zelensky has all but demanded that the citizens, every citizen in Ukraine must be armed. You know, he wants a citizen army again as a fail safe just in case uh, Russia were to steamroll them. And then finally, looking at Taiwan, which uh, there's nothing going on there just yet, but I do think it's the next flashpoint. And I think our government already knows this because they want funding sent to Taiwan as well. Uh, they're going to continue to help Taiwan prepare itself and defend itself in the case 
of an invasion. And again, that is directly from the White House. That's the White House and Joe Biden. That's their official stance on it. We want to help Taiwan in the event that they are invaded. So all of this money is being sent. All, you know, And again, shout out to the new House Speaker for savagely uh, trolling Biden and, and basically using the Democrats' own playbook against them. I still don't want to fund any wars. That's my personal opinion. But the official cover story for all of this money that's being sent around the world now is to defend against terror, to protect national sovereignty, and to prepare and defend against a would-be invasion. And as I think about this this morning, I realize, you know, we have terror here in the United States of America. We literally have pro-Hamas crowds, not, not pro-Palestinian crowds who are peaceful, okay, but we have pro-Hamas crowds here in the United States of America. Our own national sovereignty has all but been signed away to the United Nations. Think about that for a second. Our national sovereignty has been gifted to globalists in the wide open with signatures of politicians, Biden included. And we already have an invasion here in the United States of America. We're, we're funding a would-be invasion that has not technically happened yet in Taiwan to help Taiwan defend itself from invasion when we here at home are being invaded. Um, I got some statistics I wrote down here, okay, that I want to add to the conversation. So since the year 2011, Congress has introduced over 100 gun control bills, bills that have some semblance of gun control or limits and and additional checks and things like this um again newsweek reported by newsweek okay there are already hamas networks here in the united states of america now again that's coming from newsweek not me but i'm inclined to agree with this i think that we do now some people are going to call them sleeper cells or whatever call them whatever you want to it's it's to the same effect right our police departments here in the United States, they have um, a hiring crisis. They've had this since the beginning of the pandemic, hasn't actually went away. Since the beginning of the pandemic, resignations are up 47% nationally. You know, this is all the police departments put together, 47% increase in resignations, 19% increase in retirements. So the the understaffing of police officers continues to get worse. In other words, um, crime, of course, is surging nationally. And police response time nationally on average is around 10 minutes, give or take a few seconds. So I got to ask this morning. What about our right to defend ourselves? I get that the White House and Joe Biden stand with Zelensky. I get that they stand with Netanyahu. They're standing by their allies. Hey, you have a right to defend yourself, Israel. We stand with you. You have a right to defend your national sovereignty, Zelensky. We stand with you. When is the White House going to stand with the American people? Because it seems like we're being told you need to fund all of this, except for the crazy people out there who claim they never pay taxes. The rest of us are funding this insanity. And yet here at home, we're being told you shouldn't own guns. You shouldn't do this. We're going to help pay for Zelensky to arm his population. We're going to help pay for Netanyahu to arm Israel's population. But our population here at home, it's the guns. The guns are the problem. This is what we're told 
via mainstream media and through the White House itself. What about our rights to defend ourselves here at home? Cannot believe, I mean, I can, but I can't believe that we have allowed our Congress to introduce over 100 gun control bills since 2011. Folks, they're not going to stop. They're going to continue to chip away. Are y'all getting this morning? The irony, and again, I don't care where you stand on Russia and uh, Ukraine. I don't care where you stand on Israel and Palestine, whatever. I'm pro-American. I've said that out of the gates both times. But do you get the irony of paying for other countries to defend their national sovereignty while we're being overrun at the southern border? Are y'all getting that? Do you get the irony of us buying guns for other populations while also being chastised by our own government for trying to do the same thing? And I'll even throw in this. A lot of other foreign governments encourage prepping. They will put out all kinds of memos and and uh, strategic prepping plans and how to prep for certain things. And I mean, we have that to a degree. I mean, FEMA's got a few out there and stuff like this, but we're constantly told in the media it's bad. Shouldn't be prepping. Preppers are considered to be hoarders here in the United States of America. And I'm sure there are a few people that are hoarders, but most people just want to be prepared. Why do we get forced to pay for everything and live by a different set of rules? To me, this sucks. This is what's on my mind this morning. The, the irony is unreal, if I'm being honest with you. Can you imagine a world where Ukraine is paying for us and our government is encouraging us to be armed at all times? And Zelensky is mailing us billions of dollars or Netanyahu mailing us billions of taxpayer dollars from over there. Can you imagine that world? Because I don't see it happening. So I don't understand how it works one way, but not the other. But I digress. There was an article. Uh, it, it's about a year old now. It was posted online. It's the Scientific American for anybody that's interested. But the article's headline is this. The science is clear. Gun control saves lives. End quote. And, and I just, I want to kind of wrap things up here. Again, I'll read that headline. The science is clear and gun control saves lives. And then when you go into the article uh, from the Scientific American, there's actually no science in the article. It's literally all spin and all propaganda and all slant. So I'm not sure how the science can be clear when the science is, trust me, bro, is what you break it down to, really. So I want to give you some actual science this morning, okay? I'm going to give you three sterling examples of why you remain armed and you do not turn the guns in. Cuba turned the guns in. Do a deep dive on Cuba since the day they turned the guns in. See what life is like for folks in Cuba. There are a lot of people that have had to escape Cuba to get to the United States. And they're on record saying, you don't want that. They lived it. They're not, they're not just throwing out spin or, you know, these aren't ideals they are throwing out. They live this. And they're like, you don't want to be in Cuba without guns. It all went downhill when they took the guns. The Soviet Union took the guns. If you're not familiar with how many people died under communism in the Soviet Union, Read a book, Google it, pull it up online. They don't even know how many. <laughs> it's in the hundreds of millions, but they don't know exactly how many because that's how many people were disappearing once the guns were gone. A lot of people think Hitler took the guns in Germany, but that's actually not correct. Germany took the guns after World War One. What this did was this allowed the Third Reich to come to power. 
you know, oftentimes people will say, man, you know, during the, the Weimar Republic, how did the Germans allow the Third Reich to come to power? Why did they allow the things that happened to happen? Because they weren't armed. Because they weren't allowed to own firearms after World War I. These are three examples of why you don't turn the guns in. You don't turn them in for a $50, $50 coupon at your Western Sizzler. You don't turn them in at a buyback program because you, ne you didn't buy them from these people to begin with. They can't buy back something that they didn't sell you. These are all liberal scams. They are forms of gun control. And he I'm going to close it down right here, I promise, but this is the problem with liberalism. Many of you have said in the past, and I'm, I'm there with you, liberalism is a mental disorder or disease. Now, some of y'all have said that, I know, right? You can raise your hand, don't be shy. Let me tell you the problem with liberalism right now, okay? There, there are many, but let me tell you the biggest problem is because they sit down, they theorize, they debate, and when something sounds good, they push it off on people. It has no real world experience. You know what I mean? We can save the planet by not eating meat. They'll debate it. This sounds good. Now we're going to force it on everybody. We can save the planet by getting rid of gasoline engines and use electricity instead even though it's actually in the long run worse for the environment because you have to harvest all the stuff for the batteries. But they didn't get into that part during the debate. Electricity just sounds cleaner, right? It's cool. So we're going to push it on people. They push this stuff on people because it sounds good in a debate. And what I'm telling you this morning, the problem with liberalism is there are actual historical examples out there that counter almost everything that they're trying to push on you. Our country will be safer. It's the guns, bro. We got to get rid of the guns. Got to get them off the streets. America has a gun problem. And I just gave you three examples of why you don't do that. Because things get a thousand times worse after the fact. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments. Take care. God bless.